Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, Dave Vellante. You much of a sneakerhead, Dave? I wouldn't say a sneakerhead, but I have a lot of sneakers. All right, okay, well then a perfect way to introduce our next guests. Um, I'm going to start with Anil Kumar Paila. He is the Director, Data Engineering Platforms and Architecture at Foot Locker. Welcome, Anil. Thank you. And Rosemary de Aragon, she is the Global Head of Retail and Travel at Snowflake. Welcome back to theCUBE, Rosemary. Thank you. So I'm going to start with you, Anil. Tell us a little, I, mean, I think most consumers are, most, most of our audience is aware of Foot Locker and knows what you do. Tell us a little bit about how Foot Locker is using AI data cloud today. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know about Foot Locker. It's not new to many of you, I guess. Uh, Foot Locker, we have around 2,600 stores. We're a major retailer in Apple's access rates footwear. Uh, but at uh, Snowflake is the backbone for us at Foot Locker. Uh, we are, enabled, Snowflake enabled us to move from passive data analytics to rather use the data as a core uh, asset to drive the business, right? So at Foot Locker, Snowflake enables the data it enables uh, insights, ultimately it enables uh, business, right? So that's how we use, uh, uh, so we are bringing the data from all of our systems and we, uh, we infuse AI into the data and then make it intelligent data. We build intelligent data apps. We have a ton of reporting, data and analytics. We have cell service that is running on Snowflake, which is powered by Snowflake and we have apps that are built on top of Snowflake. So yeah, it's huge, so, and we are happy with uh, so what we have, uh, particularly uh, the SaaS, right? Uh, there is no need for me to worry about uh, the managing the infrastructure, the scalability aspects of it. It is really working out well for the blocker. Yeah. Can we um, zoom out, and I want to ask you about the dynamics in your business. Um, Retail business, very competitive, a lot of choices out there. You've got uh, e-commerce, uh, as, as you know, multi-channel. What are the forces in your business that are, that are the main drivers, and how is that affecting your data strategy? So, needless to say, customer is at the epicenter for us. Customer's interests are at the epicenter, right? So, we bring data, from a point of sale system, we bring data from our e-commerce, we can bring data from cha other channels. Uh, we build a customer-centric view of data within Foot Locker. And from there, we drive personalizations, we drive marketing campaigns, targeted inventory ads, a lot of stuff that we do on top of. So we follow the approach of uh, indexing the data, unifying the data, complementing with uh, the identification uh, we have our partners who can bring in the household information about the customer so that we can drive much more efficient strategies around the customer. Rosemary, what are you yeah. seeing in the retail space and, uh, and what are the similarities with travel? I'm curious about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, maybe the, the first question first, what am I seeing? I think maybe two big topics of interest recently. The first being how generative AI actually gets applied at the business uh, level. So, starting with you know, chat bots for shopping or assistance for shopping, um, to things like using generated AI for the product catalog and generating descriptions for items, helping customers search more easily. And then the other part of that, the monetization side, retailers trying to find a new way to generate revenue. So more than just selling products and items, how can you package up different data products and sell those to hedge funds that are validating investment hypotheses or um, you know, third party data aggregators if, if a hedge fund is thinking about investing in a smart uh, nightstand, how are you going to know if nightstands are selling recently and whether they should actually invest in them? Um, and so it's, it's quite fascinating. So there's non-traditional ways now on Snowflake to generate revenue from data and not just items. That's really interesting. Yeah. So when, they, when, when you hear them say channel checks, 
this yeah. could be one of those so-called channel checks. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then lastly, you know, the connection between retail and travel is that customer 360, kind of guest 360 experience. So understanding when someone lands from Beijing and maybe they're a luxury retail shopper, being able to share that data between an Hermes or LVMH with British Airlines or China Airlines, um, that connection is, is really powerful on the data side. I know more about you than you know about you. No <laughs> kidding, but I mean, that, that it, that's, it is pretty wild and a little creepy, yeah. but anyway, yeah. we're yeah. not going to go there. <laughs> Talk about some of the, the biggest data challenges that retailers are, are grappling with today. Yeah, so um, first and hot topic of the week is security and governance, especially for retailers with personally identifiable information. Yeah, if um, I can interrupt, I mean, you're saying <laughs> it's a little creepy, but you have to worry about Oh yeah. Yes, and you have to so mitigate that. Oh yeah, so. for sure. I, I actually teach a big data ethics class at UC Berkeley and one of the topics is always, you know, who, which companies are tracking me and what kind of data do they have on me? Um, and from a retailer perspective, you have to have the ability to expunge that data anytime the customer requests it or, you know, I expose that data if the customer requests that. So those security and privacy requirements then translate into technical requirements for the retailer to implement, and that becomes quite a challenge. I'm interested in that. I mean, the, teaching at UC Berkeley to Gen Zers who yeah. are perhaps a, more, more concerned, more alarmed about security yeah. and privacy than, than older generations? I mean, what, <laughs> what is your take? Well, you know, they get really alarmed during the class and then they're like, oh, I'm going to go on a social media fast. <laughs> and then I come back and I ask them, so who actually went on a social media? And no one yeah, no. has actually the guts to go on a full on social media fast. And so it's, it's funny because there's actually more awareness that we're all being surveilled, but there's still not the desire to let go of, of all that fair internet enough, surveillance. Fair enough, fair enough. Anil, how has uh, data affected your pricing strategies? Um, oh, that's I, I, a great question. This has been an ongoing conversation for years, but I feel like we're at a point now where you can actually do some real time adjustments. Right, oh, that's by a value. Good, good question. So the, when a product is launched, right, it is hot and heavy at that time. People really want, it's the best of the model. Then it will go through a phase where it will mature, and then it comes to a phase where it's marked down, and then it comes to a phase where it makes clearance, right? So we have built in a AI data app, uh, which is uh, dynamic pricing that we uh, send it to our stores and e-commerce channel. So what we do is our, we enable our merchandising business uh, more from an intuition based to a science based uh, pricing, right? So um, what it does is uh, it will uh, maximize the sell through inventory and that ultimately dictates uh, the profit and the top line and bottom line sales, right? So thinking about that spectrum of, you know, launch a new iPhone, everybody wants one, right? This end and then so the tail or end. A new pair of sneakers. A new pair of sneakers, <laughs> right, tail end, but right, same dynamic. So at the, at the front end, you, you don't have to, I mean, you price it for margin, you're going to get your margin. At the tail end, you might just want to get the product off the shelf so you can make room for the next new hot product. Is it, is it true that it's that, that fat middle that you really is the hardest to optimize, and, 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 or is it really the endpoints as well? Uh, it depends, uh, a lot of factors will come into play. Um, seasonal factors will come into play. Now Olympics is coming up, you might have launched a product, but even though it is seasoned out, but Olympics might drive the sales of your product. So typically toward the tail end, we do see a drop in the sales. That's when we, we take these markdowns, driven completely by AI, and uh, we, so, uh, that will uh, that will basically um, provide m much more sales, right? So I want to sell through some aged inventory. So I have some markdowns. I'll put it in the system. It will tell you, oh, if you bring your margin, sorry, if you bring your price predicted to so and so value, you will be selling so and so units. So we typically see towards the tail end, not in the middle end. Uh, and that's where this pricing engine will play a huge role uh, in selling through our aged inventory and bringing new markets onto the shelf. Okay, so you guys, 
Well, former Walmarters, yeah. right? So, remember beer and diapers, okay? Yeah. Do you know the story, yeah. right? You know the story, right? Oh, so the, the Walmart was selling beer and diapers and they didn't understand why. Well, they, they realized that men would go out to the store to get diapers for the baby and they'd pick up a six pack of beer, so they put them right next to each other and the sales went through the roof. I don't know if that's urban legend or what, but it was a beautiful story back then. Yeah. So we evolved from that to, and then online, just spamming you with ads that weren't relevant. You, know, yeah. you, you said something on the phone and all of a sudden you get an ad about it and you go, oh boy. <laughs> okay, we've evolved well beyond that. Where are we today in, ter in terms of you know, the modern day equivalent of, of beer and diapers? <laughs> Well, they will still do those analyses today. So, um, you know, the correlation between red cups and ping pong balls and beer, which are traditionally in two different categories on the e-commerce site, but in the store, you'll want to place them, you know, strategically in the beer aisle. Um, we, the, you know, we see retailers still doing that analysis today to understand which items have affinity towards each other. Um, in, on the e-commerce side, it's even more granular because you can get the background and the, the shopping behaviors of the customer and that is an additional data point layered on top of, okay, I know this person you know, typically buys, I don't know, red solo cups and, and ping pong balls and likes, I don't know, vegan beers or kind of the small batch beers as opposed to Coors Light. Um, and that's, you know, that is definitely something that we do at the customer level on the e-commerce side. Um, but yeah, on the retail side, th that analysis is definitely still alive today. Right, and so you now you can do on the e-commerce side anyway, mass customization yeah. at scale. Yeah. And really, and you can that's use, powerful. You can use generative AI to, to create the content that's targeted for particular customer segments as well. Um, and then you can also use third party data to understand like what are you know, young folks doing. We see a trend towards non-alcoholic beverages lately with Gen Z. Um, and so how does that translate into the content, into the emails that you push to that age range? Um, is, it's all interesting because you can use generative AI for that. When Gen Z starts having kids, it'll be bubbly water next to the diapers. <laughs> so, so they have tell, bars tell the hedge fund, just Tell the hedge funds that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're thinking about customer optimization and optimizing pricing and, and retention. Where do you see the future of retail going, Rosemary? Ooh, um, well, there's some interesting futuristic things happening. So one is the store of the future. I know Foot Locker is yeah. doing store of the future yeah. initiatives. Um, so Amazon has these stores. You walk into a dressing room, it knows your profile, and there's an endless aisle behind the door for all the different colors and sizes and shapes and everything. And it's just like a magic mirror that, and you do all your shopping in this room and it's totally tailored to you. So that's, that's an interesting kind and of You are physically there doing You're physically the shopping. There. So it's a real store. You open the door and, and you know, there's a whole supply chain in the back that's automatically bringing the item to you, delivering that's it cool. to the mirror behind <laughs> you behind the door. And then the other side, there's also live commerce, live selling. So through TikTok or Instagram, um, you know, you have someone in the store explaining live to all the people who are watching the different items as and they're touching the items, they're feeling the items and they're walking through them. And that is definitely the futuristic version of, of kind of what buying might look like as well. Yeah. So Food Locker is uh, like uh, Ross just mentioned, uh, we have started com coming out of the off-mall more to a uh, uh, store of the future concept. We are driving a core concept which we're collaborating with our partner vendor, driving the concept together. Uh, you can bring the virtual reality into the stores. Uh, the st we can feel the product, hey, how does the product fit onto you through virtual reality. So, we are driving the customer experience eventually through all of these. So, I mean, thinking about the store of the future, which is just mind-blowing, frankly, how are you gathering your data? Because, I mean, as you said, you're, you're seeing these trends, Gen Z not wanting non-alcoholic beverages. I mean, there, and then there's got to be some sort of athletic wear equivalent to that trend Fruit that you're seeing. Fruit socks, did you, know, did you know this? What's okay, this? let's hear it. Okay, <laughs> the way that young people tell if you're old, is if you wear ankle socks or no-show socks. Did you know this? Okay, I don't want to know, so. <laughs> so if you wear crew socks, you're officially young, and if you wear ankle socks or no-show socks, you're officially old. 
No shows are old now? Oh my no God. shows are old now. So anyway, in the in the footwear world, right. that would be an example. Okay, so 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 that's 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 the definition yeah. of cool according to Gen Z, apparently. <laughs> apparently. So so how are you gathering this and making sure that you're on top of this and 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 I mean obviously you're getting that data that's that's happening now, but then predicting the future. I mean this is tell me more, Anil. Yeah. So you are asking more about gathering the data. Uh, can you repeat that question one more time, please? I'm really just curious about how you are developing this store of the future and, and oh, okay. making sure that it does hit all the right futuristic buttons for, for your sh shoppers. So, so it's understanding the needs of the customer. You know, um, we have the data, what our customer wants, what their behavioral patterns are, what their needs are, and we get the market trends too, what the young people want, uh, what the, yeah, because what the basketball uh, uh, trend looks like, uh, if it's the Olympic season, what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of uh, inventory, that assortment that we should carry in the store. So with all these insights together, we ultimately bring the inventory into the store, put it in such a way, right product on the right shelf, and organize it in such a way, and talk to the customer, explaining the features of the product, and uh, also, also bring the, re, uh, the retail uh, virtual reality into play, where the customer can truly feel it before he can, he or she can wear it. You know, that's how uh, it's all about data, gathering the data, bringing the data, and knowing the trends, and then uh, making it happen in, inside the store and make the a customer feel that. You know, that's how we are. Anil Rosemary, thank you both so much. I need to go get some new socks. But. <laughs> Gen Z's are dorks. That's, that's my conclusion. I went straight to the store after I saw that analysis and bought some crew socks. I know, I don't want to be old. No, definitely not. Thank you both so much. Great conversation. Yeah, Great being here. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. That wraps up day three of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. Come back tomorrow for more of theCUBE's live coverage. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis. That was